I was born in 1970. And I remember even when I was like four and five years old, I remember the spirit of God moving so powerfully. Even as a little boy, I knew it was God and he was so good. And he was, he was filling people and he was there. His Holy Spirit was moving so powerfully. I felt him in my heart as a little child. And it was real, you guys, very real. And my parents were in this room next door because I grew, we grew up in California and Santa Cruz. And my parents were both saved, by the way, during this Jesus revolution. You might want to check that movie out that just came out. But they were miraculously saved from their drug addiction. And, and I was born in that movement. And lots of hippies were coming to know the Lord Jesus Christ. Not just hippies. There was older people. Um, there was just people from all over it was a powerful, powerful movement. It spread across the country. That see, that's that good fruit, right? I mean, Chuck Smith had, you know, guys like Greg Laurie, Skip Heidzig, my friend Wayne Taylor, um, you know, these guys, Mike McIntosh, these guys came from that Calvary movement from the Jesus Revolution, and they were the good fruit. They were Chuck's fellas, the guys that he sent out. They started new churches. And they taught the word of God and thousands of people were saved through through these guys. Real revivals always are started from someone reading the word of God, okay? And then a movement of the Holy Spirit, but then also good fruit, good, good, sweet fruit comes from what happens and it's it's long lasting fruit it's not this short little thing but a, a true jesus movement a true great awakening my friend comes from first of all the word of god's opened up and then the spirit moves and people repent and they turn from their sins they turn to god that's what repenting means just turning to god turning your eyes to jesus and it's very jesus centered that's what revival is but there's long lasting good things happening, guys, good stuff. And that's what real revival is. And we're going to look at that in this episode, you guys. So I'm real excited about this. I can't wait to get into this with you guys. I mean, this is what I know because in the 19, I was born in 1970. And I remember even when I was like four and five years old, I remember the spirit of God moving so powerfully. Even as a little boy, I knew it was God and he was so good. And he was, he was filling people and he was there. His Holy Spirit was moving so powerfully. I felt him in my heart as a little child. And it was real, you guys, very real. And my parents were in this room next door because I grew, we grew up in California and Santa Cruz. And my parents were both saved, by the way, during this Jesus revolution. You might want to check that movie out that just came out. But they were miraculously saved from their drug addiction. And, and I was born in that movement. And lots of hippies were coming to know the Lord Jesus Christ. Not just hippies. There was older people. Um, there was just people from all over it was a powerful, powerful movement. It spread across the country. That see, that's that good fruit, right? I mean, Chuck Smith had, you know, guys like Greg Laurie, Skip Heidzig, my friend Wayne Taylor, um, you know, these guys, Mike McIntosh, these guys came from that Calvary movement from the Jesus Revolution, and they were the good fruit. They were Chuck's fellas, the guys that he sent out. They started new churches. And they taught the word of God and thousands of people were saved through, through these guys. That's the good fruit, you guys. So, <laughs> and it was long lasting. Those are the signs of a real true revival. And I hope we have another one soon because our country needs one big time. But we're going to look at what the word of God says in this, this video. We're going to see in the Old Testament a, a legit revival with Josiah, King Josiah, and what that looked like, you guys. So here we go. Okay, here it is, guys. So it says in 2 Kings uh, chapter 22, verse 10, Moreover, Shaphan, the scribe, informed the king, King Josiah, saying, Hilkiah, the, the priest, has given me a book. So Hilkiah, the high priest, found a book. They were, they were restoring the temple, remodeling it, and he found the Torah, the books of Moses, the law, you guys. And Hilkiah, the priest, has given me a book, he said. And Shaphan read it 
in the presence of the king, King Josiah. And when the king heard the words of the book of the law, he tore his clothes. That was a way of repenting. He felt sorry for his sin and his nation's sin, because at that time, uh, Josiah's grandfather and his father were into that idol worship and false gods, and they had witches and sorcery going on. There was those poles in the high places, temples in high places, and prostitution, and temp- that weird kind of worship, which is a lot like today, by the way. And uh and he real and he didn't he didn't hear the word of God like this. It was hidden away for so long. But then someone opened up the word of God and read it to him, and he was the Holy Spirit convicted him, and he tore his clothes, repented. That means just turn from his sins, turn to God. That's what repentance means. And here he is, and this is a great revival in Judah at that time. So that's what we see when there is a legit revival. And by the way, guys, you know, in history, and even church history, revival started typically from somebody reading the book of Romans, right? Out of this book, the Bible. This is this is a part of a real revival, is the word of God, you guys. It's not just the outpouring of the Holy Spirit. It's someone opening up the word of God. And then out, typically after that, the Holy Spirit pours in in a powerful way and people start repenting turning from their old ways, turning their eyes, getting their eyes upon Jesus, right? That's what real real revival is. In fact, the Jesus revolution, it was called the Jesus movement or the Jesus people movement. They were Jesus people. My parents were a part of that, you guys. I'm a part of that now. I'm a Jesus person and revival is still in my heart. I remember how it was, but guess what? Revivals in people like Greg Laurie, for instance, and my friend Wayne Taylor and Skip Heidzig, they're still in that revival. You know, uh, even Billy Graham, he had a personal revival from reading the Word of God and repenting and getting filled with the Holy Spirit, and he had it his whole life. And you can too, you guys. Real revival is turning to the scriptures. And I recommend reading the book of Romans, by the way, and we're doing that. You can check out right now, you can check out this. Um, playlist right here. And if you look at that playlist, you'll see that we are going through the book of Romans right now, verse by verse, chapter by chapter. You can watch some of the old episodes. But what happens is in chapter one of Romans, God shows you how bad the world is, how sinful it is. And then in chapter two, it says, you who judge are just as bad as them because you're a sinner too. And it helps you understand that you need to turn to God as, as well. You who might think you're good, you're not. Okay. And you turn to God, and God is so good, and he gives you grace, getting something good you don't deserve, the the free gift of salvation to start a relationship, to be born again in the family of God, a relationship with Jesus Christ. That's grace, and it comes through faith, right? And that's what we're going through right now, and I invite you to go check that out, guys. So, hey, I love you. God bless you. Be careful, you guys. Oh, one last thing. Be careful of false prophets and false uh, apostles and teachers, people who claim to be these things that come in and they want to hijack a, a mini revival, which m- might be was what happening in Asbury, Kentucky right now. I don't know. It could be a real one. We'll see what time will tell us. But you got to be careful. There's a movement called the NAAR movement, which is the New Apo- Apostolic Reformation. And what these people are doing is they think they're going to usher in the kingdom of God. Okay. And they think that they're apostles, they have apostles and prophets, and they're the ones that are going to bring this great revival to usher in the kingdom. That's not how it works, you guys. First of all, Jesus said, no one knows the day or the hour, okay? <laughs> so your, you might be thinking, this revival is going to bring in the kingdom of God. You don't know that. And the second thing is, I'm very careful about anybody who calls themselves a prophet. Someone have, may have a word from the Lord, but they don't go around calling themselves a prophet and furthermore, even worse, people that call themselves apostles. Be careful of these people, all right? Watch out, <laughs> okay? You test everything through the Word of God, and you will get discernment from the Holy Spirit as well. So make sure you do that, you guys, all right? God bless you. I love you, and I'll see you guys next time.